The following is a production of the Penn Sports Network. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and sports fanatic of all ages, and welcome to the third installment of the Crimson Conversion on the Penn Sports Network. I am your host, the Beard of Broadcasting, Jeff Hart, and joining me today are sports analyst Stephen Langdon Jr. and Jake Slobotnik. We have an action-packed episode today of IUP Sports, and guys, I am excited. How are you feeling today? I'm excited as well. I'm feeling pretty good, especially since it's episode three. Absolutely, and starting off today, we have sports analyst Jacob Slobotnik giving us an intake on field hockey. Starting off today's show, we take a look at the women's field hockey team. Coming off one of the worst seasons in club history, the Lady Hawks take a 3-13 overall record into Westchester this Saturday for their final match of the season. Although the record may look dismal, at least 70% of their losses were decided by one or two points. Kimberly Kelly is the name that stood out the most this season as she leads the campaign with four goals, nine points, and a shot percentage of .308. Senior goalkeeper Olivia Accardi has been carrying most of the defensive weight on her shoulders in her final season, tallying 148 saves this season, 16 coming from their match against 7th-ranked Kutztown a few weeks ago. The major hindrance for this team was their penalty tally. Collectively, they have 287 fouls on the season, along with a 24-11 to penalty ratio per game. These are what can cost you games, especially when the line is tight. However, there's a similarity between the field hockey team and the women's volleyball team. They both have young squads, graduating only five seniors, three starters. This club looks to put up a strong fight in the years to come. Could they make a playoff run in the next year or two? Signs are pointing toward yes. Great analysis, Jake. And next up for the next segment, we have Steven giving us an inside view of the cross country team. Yeah, the cross-country team competed in the PSAC Championships on Saturday. The meet took place at Edinburgh University. The weather played a big factor as there were gusty winds and steady rainfall throughout the day. The women's team finished tied for 13th overall with Millersville at the meet. The team competed on the 6K course that featured almost 200 runners. Sam Chrisman led the way finishing in 34th place with a time of 25.41. On top of Chrisman, Tricia Varner finished second on the team with an 69th overall at 26.44. And on the men's side, they ran an 8K race on the same day. The team finished fifth out of 15 teams running. The race featured over 227 runners. Sam Lins had a big day leading the team by finishing at 14th with a time of 27.36. He beat his time from last year's PSAC championship by over a minute. Also in the top 25 was Michael Dunlick, who finished 21st with a time of 27.57, almost a minute faster than last year. Both Linz and Dunlick were named IUP Athletes of the Week, and it was their first time in both their careers to receive the honor. The men's and women's teams will compete in the ninth annual Go Fast River Run at Lock Haven Saturday before going to Pittsburgh for the 2018 NCAA Division II Atlantic Region Championships November 17th. Thank you, Stephen. And for the next topic, we are going to be tackling it with a group discussion. We are going to move into the world of the gridiron and talk IUP football. This past week was an utterly dominating defensive performance from the Crimson Hawks. Guys, what is your take on their performance this past week against Embro? Well, in last week's episode, Stephen had a great, a great prediction, you know, IUP winning by seven. He said even that victory can maybe hinder their chances at reaching the playoffs. We did see California struggle this past week. So it's pretty much up to chance. They have one week, one week left to prove themselves, and if California can fall, and if IUP can reign victorious, it'll look good on IUP's end. Now, guys, one thing that I've noticed, if, if it does come down to the wire, IUP kind of has an upper hand when it comes to seeding because they are in the D2 coaches poll, which could hinder Cal the Vulcans' chance of getting in the playoffs. It's gonna be a weird week whenever Shippensburg comes to invade Miller Stadium. Um, I'm expecting great things from Lenny Williams in the IP offense. Steven, I know you're going to touch on this. Lenny Williams may be playing in his last IUP football game ever. Yeah, his, maybe his last IUP football game ever, and most likely his last home football game ever. Uh, but Lenny Williams continued the trend for IUP. It was their third straight week with a 100-yard rusher, and Lenny Williams leading the day with 106. Unfortunately, though, with the poor conditions on the field, uh, they also played in Edinburgh. So we saw a little bit of what we saw at the cross country course is that it was raining all day, gusty winds and just horrible playing conditions. And it was really about running the ball. Unfortunately, 
IUP gave up a lot of rushing yards. Fletcher for Edinburgh had 186 rushing yards. You need to pick up on those things, but I don't think that will hinder their uh, success this week as they play Shippensburg. Not really the best team, but definitely a team that can withstand IUP's offense. Definitely a middle-of-the-range team, and it's all going to come down to whether the IUP offense shows up that day or whether they decide to stay indoors and miss the postseason altogether. Um, Prediction-wise, I think Lenny Williams is going to come into this game strong. Uh, Justice Evans is going to carry over the hot streak he's been having lately. I don't see anything wrong with him. A few notable injuries for the Crimson Hawks. Tyler Belega out for the season with a torn ACL after injuring it by falling into a hole during warm-ups against the Edinburgh game. You mentioned poor conditions both on the field and quite honestly the live stream was a bit lackluster, but we're not going to get into that. But yes, Tyler Belega out. Uh, Samir Bullock's been used, utilized um, more conservatively. I think he's going to get a bigger push coming into this game. Shippensburg not really a rush defense, so I think IUP's going to capitalize on that. Um, and... It, it, and also another thing that they really need to improve on, Dylan Sarka, get the lead out of your foot, son. You can't be missing extra points, can't be missing easy chip shots from a field goal range. Those are what's going to come down to it. You, did, you were able to co overcome Ashland last year in a lot of crucial games with your foot, but please, 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 I am 20 years old. I am way too young to be getting gray hairs because of your uh, middle-of-the-range kicking. Please improve upon that. So if Sarkin can get on that, I really think that's going to come down to his foot winning the winning or losing the game for the Crimson Hawks this week. You touched upon Justice Evans. I think that this is a great game for him to succeed in. We saw he's really taken over the workload on that IUP rushing attack since you had Chris Temple, who's been dealing with a minor in injury. I expect him to be suited up for this week, oh, totally. especially since it's going to be his last game. And I'm expecting Samir Bullock to get a few carries. We saw last week that he got a decent amount of carries, but I think the injury is still hindering a little bit. Uh, I expect the workload to be 50-50 with Samir and with Justice. But I expect Lenny Williams to come out here and have at least four passing touchdowns in this game. I expect Dom McNeil to go off. having He had 80 yards leading to wide receiver total and really made up for or the majority of that receiving receiving yards. So I expect him to come out strong. I expect Lenny Williams to have at least 250 passing yards. I do as well, and we meant a lot. Last week was definitely a factor of the defensive side for the Crimson Hawks. They tallied three interceptions, four sacks on IUP's part, and the biggest thing that really helped the IUP seal the deal was the Damon Lloyd, J.R. Stevens connection in the end zone. Damon Lloyd was able to tip the pass up. Stevens able to intercept it. They fell in the end zone for a touchback. They were able to, they were able to seal the deal pretty much, as I said before. So if they if they can keep the defensive flow going coming into this game, it's gonna be easy pickings for the Crimson Hawks. Absolutely, guys, and great analysis on the game. Hopefully, IUP can keep this hot streak going and propel them into the playoffs. Now we're going to cross over to the hardwood and talk about IUP men's basketball. This past week, the basketball team had an exhibition game against the number two ranked Kentucky, the powerhouse Division I school. That is correct. They lost 64 to 86. However, it was a competitive match through and through. What is your guys' take on that game? Steven, I'll let you take the floor on this one. Well, I have to say, Kobo G Diaz had a, himself a heck of a day. Absolutely. 17 points, 3 of 5 from 3. We don't really expect m many three-pointers to come out of him, but for him to shoot the ball so well. Also, William Brunwick, fantastic game through and through. 6 of 9 with 5 boards and 14 points on the day. I really think that he was a really dominant force. I saw in the first quarter, he was or first half, he was really getting into those, uh, the zone and picking up rebounds and driving to the basket and really doing a fantastic job. But for this team to go into Kentucky, one of the hardest places to play for even Division I schools and most certainly for any team to go in there, it's really, I think it was just a great game through and through for the team. And I'm expecting great things out of the team moving forward. I really do think that this is their season to shine. Absolutely. And they only lost, I think they lost to Kentucky only by less than 20 at least. I forget the actual score. but And the thing is, I'm going to take it from a logistical standpoint here. IUP held them to at least nine points three quarters of the whole game. And for a D2 to come into a national championship contending school and hold them to that much, I don't know whether to say IUP is a powerhouse team or if Kentucky's on the downward spiral. I like to think more of the IUP on the positive side. But that is just outstanding altogether. 
one stat I really do like, and something IUP does very well, is shooting free throws. 77.8% from the free throw line. If you're going to win basketball games, shooting free throws can either make or break a game. We've seen it so many times throughout all all shapes and sizes of basketball that if you can't make those free throws, then your team will struggle. And that was one of the major strong suits for them last year, and they continued it against Kentucky. But looking at Kentucky, you can't underestimate this team. They had uh, P.J. Washington, who had 20 points in the game. He was the 11th overall prospect last year. So just to play against a Kentucky team that you know is going to be probably in the Sweet 16 without a doubt this year, I really did expect them to come out coming out strong and for this IUP team to withstand such a great team I think is a really big confidence booster going forward absolutely and you addressed the uh, free throw stat however I think one of the really key stats to this game was the turnover ratio IUP beat Kentucky on the turnover game only allowing 11 whereas Kentucky had 14 and that did allow for some of those free throw points I mean if IUP can continue to play like that I mean the ceiling's through the roof for them guys I well let's also not forget that IUP is as I honestly think their strong suit is in the defensive game. Sure, they can put up big numbers on offense, but it all comes down to can you pay attention to where the ball is at at the moment? Can you force turnovers? And IUP is exceptionally or exceptional at doing so. You know, they use their size very well. Exactly. I've noticed that. I noticed that in that game. They use their big man very well. They know it's a team that knows what they have to do to win the game. You saw every team every team has player roles and IUP knows their roles. So I think that's another great thing. They have a lot of team chemistry as well. We saw a couple mishaps, but when you're playing against Kentucky, you might have those kind of things, maybe a little nervous coming out of the start in the starting blocks, but just overall fantastic. Oh, absolutely. And I mean, guys, with their first regular season game going up against unranked Concord, how do you think IUP is going to come out of the gates? Well, if it's any, if we see anything coming out of the Kentucky game, IUP is going to smoke Concord. I don't, <laughs> I don't think it's going to be a close contest at all, and especially IUP riding the heat coming into the home turf in front of their loyal, loyal student fan base. It's going to be one heck of a game from the IUP. IUP basketball team. My favorite game I'm going to be watching out for is Virginia State the next day. It's going to be on Saturday at night, and they're ranked 16th. IUP, of course, ranked 8th going into the season. So I'm really interested to see how this IUP fares going against their first ranked opponent this season. But I think overall, this tournament that's happening this weekend, it's going to look great for IUP. I'm expecting big things out of the team. Without a doubt. And now switching over to women's basketball. After coming off their own strong exhibition against Ohio State, the Lady Hawks are hoping to beat a uh, weak and anemic Alderson Broadus team. And how, how do you, exactly how, how do you think how do you think they are going to uh, compete per se with Alderson Broadus? If you watch the IUP women's Geneva game last year, that's what I think is going to be. And if you don't know what I'm talking about. Go look back at the stat book, look at the score, and look at the pure decimation IUP put up. They almost won by 50 points. They were in the 150 column. That's how I think it's going to be this coming weekend. Yeah, I'm expecting big things out of Appleby and, of course, the entire team. I expect them to score at least 80 points in that game. And really just overall, I think it's going to be a fantastic weekend for both teams, and they're going to show why they are ranked as high as they are. Absolutely, and you addressed Appleby. She had a 23-point performance and looked absolutely smooth as can be. Chris game out there. Exactly, and Carolyn Appleby, we knew coming into this season that she would be a strong factor for the IEP women's basketball team, and she she has not she has not disappointed as of yet. I don't think she's going to disappoint at all. I think she's going to continue the hot streak. She may be an understudy named IEP athlete of the week at least I would say at least 10 times, maybe more. She, I think she's going to get All American in double in D2. Um, I think she's going to put up some great numbers this season. Maybe even lead them to a championship. Who knows? Absolutely. And thank you, Steve. Thank you, Jay. And that concludes what we have this week for the Crimson Conversion. I am your host, Jeff Hart. And before we go, everybody, if you want to watch any of the sports that we just discussed, you can watch them and stream them at IUPathletics.com. Shout out to the pen where all of us write for, and you can get the latest in news and sports. And shout out to the Big Hit every Friday at 8 o'clock. Tune in. We have the best sports analysts giving you their opinions week in and week out. Have a great week, everybody.
This has been a production of the Penn Sports Network.